Hey guys, so this is Paptim part 2 video and here we'll dive deeper into consonant assimilation that'll help you read, speak, and pronounce Korean a lot, a lot easily and smoothly. So let's get started. To help you get the gist of consonant assimilation, let's take a look at this sentence. Um, so thank you in Korean is, as many of you know, 감사합니다. 감사합니다. And if we write it in a Romanized alphabet, it's 감사합니다. Right? 감사합니다. But once people figure out that it's written 감사합니다 rather than 감사합니다 with 미음 받침, right? Um, they sort of get confused. And the reason why it's written this way but is read this way is because consonant assimilation happened between 비읍받침 and 니은 consonant here. So when they get assimilated, it becomes, I mean its sound becomes 감사합니다. So instead of 감사합니다, 감사합니다 sounds more natural and it's actually more comfortable for your mouth since you don't need to make extra pressure. So you can think of consonant assimilation as a tool um, that helps you pronounce words with more ease and less discomfort. And let's take a look at another example. In this sentence, um, uh, it means I only bought clothes. So 옷 here means clothes. And on its own, it's read 옷, right? Do you remember that 시읍박침 has 읏 sound at the end? So this is 옷, right? But when this sentence is read together, okay, let's first enunciate each word. So it's 옷만 샀어, 옷만 샀어, 옷만 샀어. Uh, but it sounds very unnatural when you speak it like that. So when you read this sentence or say this sentence, you say 옷만 샀어, 옷만 샀어. So it sounds like this, 옷만 샀어. So this word 옷 sounds like 온 here. So when another person says this, if you're not aware of the consonant assimilation, even if you know the word 옷 as close, you won't understand what the speaker is trying to say and you'll wonder what the heck 온 means. You need to know on hearing 온만 샀어 that 온 actually comes from 옷 and it's read 온 because of the meme consonant that comes after it because the consonant assimilation happened. So consonant assimilation is not just so that you speak with more accuracy, but also that you understand what other people mean clearly so that you can communicate better. It's not so important that you memorize everything, but that you at least kind of understand what's happening inside the words, like what kind of pronunciation, what kind of assimilation happens and why it's pronounced this way. So let's get started. Uh, we'll start with the assimilation that happens when the consonant ing, which doesn't have a sound on its own, comes after every patim, like these words here. So every word has a patim, and the next consonant is, as you can see, all ing. So we'll start with these types of words. Um, so let's start. So let's read the first word. Sok you. Sok you. If you read it fast, it's 석유, 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 석유. So it's read 석유, right? So since 이응 doesn't have a sound, the final consonant and 이응 blend together and make a g sound. So it's pronounced 석유. Let's... Same with this word, it's 기차역에. 기차역에, 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 기차역에. So here, it's 기차역에, right? Because consonant assimilation happens between these two. Um, but one thing to note, there's a small exception. So this word, which means a color pencil, strangely is not read 세견필, as you might have expected. It's not 세견필, but it's actually 생년필. 
생년필, 생년필. Um, so it doesn't obey the typical 뒤육 받침 and 이응 consonant assimilation that we just learned and it changes into a completely unexpected pronunciation. And I don't, you know, I don't know exactly why it's 생년필 and not 세견필. It's just the way we say it. But the good news is that there aren't like tons of exceptions like this. So I suggest that you keep on practicing with the typical rules first. And whenever you encounter the words that aren't pronounced following the typical rule, you can note them separately then. So you don't need to like pressure yourself into like memorizing everything. You can correct it as you go. So this is one of those rare examples where it doesn't follow typical rules and it's not 생연필, it's 생연필 and it means a color pencil. Let's move on to the next word with 니은 받침. So this one's easy as well. It's 연어, right? 연어, 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 연어. And this one as well, it's easy. 타다, 타다. So it sounds like 타다, 타다, 타다. However, here comes another exception. So this word might seem like it's supposed to be read 타디, following the typical rule, but um, this is actually a wrong way of pronouncing it. The correct way is 타지. So when 디귿 받침, is followed by this very word e then it produces z sound oh this particular uh word is read taji just like these two words as you can see tigut patin is followed by the word e right so this one is not read he do di but it's read he to ji because these pronounce uh, these make z sound and same with this one this is not read ma di but since this one is e placed after tigupatsim it becomes ba ji ma ji it's a bit difficult to make sense out of at first um but i think the most important thing is that you understand that's just the way it is um so let's look at these two words. Now, can you read each one correctly now? So this one follows the typical rule and becomes pardon, right? It's it's pronounced pardon, but this one has E sound after good patim, right? E, e letter. So this one is not padi, but this one is pa chi. This one is red pa chi. Pardon, pa chi. Zu or chol, ya, chol ya, chol ya. This one's easy. It becomes chol ya, chol ya. Also an easy one. Si mo, si mo, si mo, si mo. And this one is easy as well. Chaba, chaba, chaba. And there is one exception word that I would like to mention, and it's this word. So, Europe nyo hing, Europe nyo hing. Um, it means Europe travel, and it should be read Europe nyo hing. Yurobyoheng, following the typical rule, Yurobyoheng. However, um, a lot of Koreans, including myself, read this as Yuromnyoheng. Yuromnyoheng. Yuromnyoheng, rather than Yurobyoheng. Yurobyoheng. And I honestly don't know why exactly. I just habitually say it like that, even if it's not the entirely correct way to read it. So, my point here is that if you get confused by some of the words and phrases Korean people say in a way that's opposed to what you have learned, you can just be like, okay, this is also the way they say it because even native speakers don't speak 100% correct languages. I hope you know what I mean. 
And moving on to Xiut Batin followed by Ying um, consonant. So this one is also typical. So O Xi because these two blend together. And this one as well, this is O Xi, right? So because these two make Su sound together. O Xi, O Xi. However, this one, um, so this one means clothes and this one is how much. How much are those clothes is uh, the meaning of this phrase and it you, you might think this should be o solmaya, o solmaya, but it's not that way. It's actually o dolmaya, o dolmaya, o dolmaya, o dolmaya. It's not o solmaya, but o dolmaya. So it's pretty different from this rule that we just learned. How come this is the and this is su? Um, you may ask, and I think it's a bit too much to explain it here. So when we get to grammar classes later, I can explain further then. But for now, just bear in mind that siut batim um, combined with ian consonant sometimes produces su sound and sometimes du sound. And this one's pretty easy too. It's e to. Then this one is easy as well. Na tsu. Moving on to tigut batsin. So this one is easy and typical as well. This one is ka ta. Ka ta. Ka ta. Ka ta. But um, do you remember when E, this letter, comes after tigut batim? Um, they produce d sound and not d sound, right? Uh, and same with tigut batim with uh, E, this letter. So okay, let's. Uh, this is clean enough. Uh, so this one doesn't become ka t. It actually becomes ka chi, ka chi. So tigut batim plus e produces z sound, whereas tigut batim with e produces z sound. So this is not ka ti or ka ji. This is ka chi, ka chi, and this means uh, together. Ka chi, ka chi. So if we look at more examples, um, this one is not e, right? Right. So this follows the typical rule, and is red, pate, pate. Um, however, this one has e letter after tiga patin, so this one becomes pachi, pachi. Um, so let's look at these four words. So this one is not e, so it follows the typical rule and becomes pada. This one as well, they follow the typical rule, ko oh, ko te, ko te, right? However, these two words have e letter, so this one has an exceptional rule, pa ji, because these two produces ji sound. And these two produces ci sound. So this becomes ko chi. So pa da, ko te, pa ji, ko chi. And the one with pi pa chin. This one is easy as well. It's very simple. It just becomes ape, ape, right? And hilpatim, I think I already explained um, hilpatim's consonant assimilation in the previous video, so I don't, I won't explain further. But this becomes chu ah because hilpatim and ian consonant combined um, produces no sound, just ian sound, right? And ian doesn't have any sound; it just blends into whatever sound the vowel has, so it becomes chu ah chu ah. Okay. So now we're going to look at the consonant assimilation that happens with the respective patin 
and the consonants other than ing consonants. So first starting from 귀엽받침 and 귀엽받침. Um, so let's take a look at this word here and this word here. So this one first. Um, 가, right? 가, 나, 라. 가, 나, 라. And this means each country. If you enunciate it's 각 나라, but if you read them all together, if you read them fast, it becomes 각 나라, 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 right? It becomes 각 나라, 각 나라. If you say it like this, it sounds very, I don't know, it sounds very fierce and it's uncomfortable for your mouth as well. So what happens with 귀엽받침 and 니은 consonant is that they produce um, 이응받침 sound and 니은 sound remains. So 강, 나, 라 is the correct way to read this word. And similarly, uh, with 귀엽받침 and 니은 consonant, uh, if, if we enunciate it first, 부, 억. 네, 부억 네, right? But 기억받침 and 니은 consonant produces 이응받침 sound and 니 consonant sound remains, so it becomes 부억 네, 부억 네, 부억 네, 부억 네, and this means inside the kitchen. We don't say 부억 네, 부억 네. We say 부억 네, 부억 네. Okay, and next one. 기억받침, uh, 기억받침 followed by the consonant. So this one, can you try to, okay, so I'll try to read each one. 석류, 석류, 석류. And it's okay if it feels comfortable for you, but um, Koreans most of the time read it like this. 석류. Rather than 석류, 석류. Um, because 기억받침 and 리을 consonant produces 이응받침 sound and 리을 gets replaced to 니은 sound because that's much um, comfortable for us to, that's much easier for us to pronounce. So rather than 석류 or 성류, we say 성류, 성류. But if you find 석류 okay to pronounce, you can pronounce it that way. But you need to understand that when other Koreans say 성류, 성류, you have to know, oh, that means 성류, 성류. Because that's why we're um, studying consonant assimilation in order to understand what other people are saying. And same with 기억받침 and 리을 consonant. They produce 이응받침 sound and 니은 consonant so this becomes 부 부엉 나 이트 부엉 나 이트 부엉 나 이트 so i think 부엉 나 이트 is also possible for this word um but since uh this combination isn't common so it's not that important just remember that 기억 받침 and 리을 consonant produces Mm, mm sound and that would do moving on to okay so let's take a look at another example so this one is this one produces mm sound so this is mangne. this is red mangne rather than makne makne this is red mangne mangne and it means um, someone who's the youngest. And same with this one, we just learned that this combination produces ng sound, right? So, chocolate becomes tongni. And next one. 기억받침 followed by 미음 consonant. So this is 한국말, right? 한국말. If you read it fast, it becomes 한국말, 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 한국말. 한, 한국말. 국말. 
So this one also produces ng sound and niem sound remains. So this is not hanguk mal, but hangung mal. Hangung mal. And let's take a look at another um, word. This one also has kyokpats and niem consonant combination. So ng m sound, right? Ang ma. Ang ma. Ang ma. Rather than ak ma. Ak ma. Ang ma. Ang ma. And this means a devil. And same with kyok patsim. This also produces um ng m sound. So he til nyok bu right? He til nyok bu But when you read it fast, you'll notice that it becomes he til nyok bu ryok. He til nyok bu ryok. He til nyok bu ryok. Right? He til nyok bu ryok. He til nyok bu ryok. And you can see that there's a space between these two words. And word spacing is very common. Uh, it's part of the Korean grammar to uh, space two words correctly. And that's what we'll cover in our grammar lessons. So you don't need to understand um, how the word spacing works for now. And 기억받침 followed by 히읗 consonant. Produce it, uh, this combination produces k sound. So, 북한, 북한, right? But it's very uncomfortable for your mouth to pronounce it that way. It's rather pronounced 북한, 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 북한. And this means North Korea. Let's take a look at one more example of this combination. So as I told you, this produces k sound. So instead of sikhe, sikhe, it becomes si sikhe, sikhe. Okay, let's move on to nian batim. So when nian batim is followed by liel consonant, it produces liel batim sound and liel consonant sound remains. So rather than han liu han liu han liu we read this like hallu hallu and i think it doesn't matter that much if you pronounce it hallu 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 because people will understand what you're saying but the more natural and more native way of pronouncing this word is hallu hallu because that's more comfortable for korean people's tongue and this one as well but this is uh son right and this is lung right son lung son lung son lung um but it's way easier for us to follow the assimilation rule and pronounce it like sol lung sol lung sol lung it's one of the subway stops in Seoul. so next example is punni but instead of reading as reading it as pul punli, we read it as pulli, following the consonant assimilation, pulli. So there is um, this word, and then there is this word, and both are read pulli. These two sound exactly the same. So when you get to a more advanced level. When you can understand like many more sentences, you, you'll have to figure out when someone says pulli, if it means this pulli or uh, this pulli, depending on the context. So I guess to kind of let you know the meaning of it, this means to separate and this means something is like not in favor of something. So when someone is in a pulli han situation, it means that um, there is like very little advantage or benefits to that person. So I prepared this sentence just so you might get confused. So you might see that there is niel batsim and liel consonant combination here. And you might think that consonant assimilation happens in um, this sentence as well, but that's actually not true. So it's correct to read it like ku gon li sakoya. Ku gon li sakoya rather than 
thinking that consonant assimilation happens between these two. Um, this is something that you need to know the grammar of to understand, so I'll just leave it at this. If it's not like a sentence and just the words that has nian bakjim and liu consonant, they definitely uh, make consonant assimilation happen, but in certain sentences um, where two words are spaced, um, then they don't necessarily make consonant assimilation. So sometimes assimilation can happen when two words are spaced and sometimes it does not happen. I think um, for now this would be enough. And moving on to Nian Bakjim with he consonant. This one, you can read it like Chon Hua, but you can also follow the consonant assimilation rule and let it produce n sound only. So instead of Chon Hua enunciating its word, we say Chona, Chona. And same with this one. It's um, Pon Ho, but we read it like this. Pon, Pon. So um, this word means phone number. So it's tona bono, tona bono, tona bono. So we say tona bono boyo, and it means what's your phone number? Tona bono boyo. Okay, moving on to digut batin. Um, so digut batin followed by nian consonant becomes. Nian sound, Nian patsim sound, and Nian sound remains. So instead of tat nayo, tat nayo, we say tan nayo, tan nayo, tan nayo, tan nayo, tan nayo. I think the same thing happens in English language. Um, actually, a lot of consonant assimilation that happens in Korean language also happens in English as well. So let's take a look at this word. Hat name, right? Hat name. But when you speak it fast, it becomes hat name, hat name, hat name. You can barely hear the sound at the end, so it just becomes hat name, hat name. And this one is kind of similar to that. So instead of enunciating like tan na yu, tat na yu, it just becomes tan na yu, smoothly, tan na yu. So same with this one. Um, this one becomes Konnenda, konnenda, right? Konnenda. And same with tigut batim with nian consonant, they produce the same sound as tigut batim. Kanni, kanni. And same with this one, yanna, yanna, yanna. And next one, take a button followed by here consonant. So they produce t sound. So it becomes ma chong, ma chong, ma chong, rather than ma chong, ma chong, ma chong, ma chong. However, um, these two words follow a different rule. So I told you that tigupatim and he consonant produces t sound, but not in this word. They actually produce t sound here. So this becomes katsida, and this one also produces t sound. Ka cho cho. So, tigut batim and hit combination becomes sometimes tiut or sometimes tiut. Sometimes become tigut and sometimes become uh, tiut, like these two words. The combination of tigut batim and hit consonant isn't that common. So, these two examples would do for now. So, the first one means the oldest brother, and the second one, this one means to be trapped. These two have different conjugation, which we'll also learn in our grammar class later. And moving on to liyul batim and nian consonant. This one, if you read it separately, it becomes sol nal, sol nal. And actually.
actually there's nothing wrong with pronouncing it sarnal exactly as it is but try reading it fast sarnal 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 and you'll find that it's a lot easier to read it like sarnal instead of sarnal with ni sound becoming l sound so this is the consonant assimilation that happens between ribatsim and ni consonant and likewise with this word this one it's also okay to read it like tony because everybody will understand but for your mouth sake um it's better to read it tilly tilly rather than tilly 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 and liye batsim with hid consonant so they produce um just the sound with he it sound kind of disappearing so it becomes tare rather than tarhe tarhe so tarhe doesn't really there's so there's nothing wrong with tarhe pronouncing it tarhe but when you speak fast it automatically becomes tare tare same with this one bahe bahe and when you read it fast it becomes mare 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 and niem batsin with li consonant so this is simli right simli i know that depending on what your native language is it's easy to read it as it is like simli simli making clear li sound but for koreans it's much easier to read it like this simni simni instead of simli simli same with um this one so it's am am li a but most of us read it like am am ni a am am ni a so if you're um attentive enough you'll notice that consonant assimilation happens here as well so the more correct way to pronounce it would be um um ni e right so we we say um um ni e um um ni e um um ni e with ni e sound getting replaced with ni e sound um um ni e and same with this one um we don't read it like sam liu sam liu but we read it like this sam new with the um sound becoming new sound sam new sam new and new batsim combined with here consonant uh this means night sky and when you read it fast it becomes pamane pamane rather than pamhane pamane pamane and another example would be my name so this is my name this is my korean name and if as you can see there's a niem batsim and hil consonant combination so this one if i enunciate it's sim hyu jong but when you read it fast it becomes sim hyu jong sim hyu jong sim hyu jong uh, but if you don't include my my last name and just call me by my first name it's hyojung hyojung right so hyojung would be the correct way to pronounce my first name alone and if you put my last name it's simyojung simyojung and moving on to pyeopbatsim and pyeopbatsim together since they are like sisters um let's take a look at these uh, these two first so the first one is p button followed by Indian consonant and the next one and the the one below it is p button followed by Indian consonant and they both have the same role so top knee right but try reading it fast tom knee tom knee tom knee tom knee and you'll hear tom knee so p becomes mean button sound and nian sound remains and this becomes tomni and same with this one p button sound becomes mean button sound thereby becoming tomni as well so they two sound exactly the same although they're written differently and they they have different meaning and this one is the same so do you remember this word simli 
was red shimni, right? With ni and batsim. And this one, these two are the same. So they are red, not shipli, but shimni. 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 With pure batsim. And this one the same with pure batsim and pure batsim becoming mian batsim sound and lear sound getting replaced by nian sound. So this one is shimni and this one is shimni as well. I'm saying with this one. All three are red shimni. Shimni. And the most typical example of pure batsim and nian uh, consonant is this one. Um, so this is another way of saying thank you. So this one is komap. So it's not sumnida, but sumnida. So piyupatim becomes a miyupatim sound, therefore making it making it a lot smoother to pronounce. Komapsumnida, komapsumnida, komapsumnida. And let's take a look at these two. So these two follow the same role. Jipman. Chipman, 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 and you'll hear chipman with pure batim becoming mean batim sound, and this one as well, chipman, 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 chipman. The same, right? So these combinations produces um m sound, um m m, chipman, chipman. And same with these two, so they produce p sound, and this one as well. So do you button followed by here consonant? Ji pe, ji pe, ji pe, and this one becomes a pe, a pe. Chipe and Ape. So they both produce P sound when they're combined. Moving on to Siet Batim. So this is Tot Ni, right? Tot Ni. But as we did with Tigat Batim, um, this one isn't pronounced Tot Ni. Tot Ni. We don't enunciate each word, it just naturally becomes. Tonni, right? Tonni. And same with this one. This is Tonni. It's way easier to pronounce it Tonni rather than Totni, Totni, right? Same with this one. So here, consonant assimilation happens and it's read Kanan Agi. Kanan Agi. Kanan Agi. And this one as well. In mom, in mom, in mom, in mom, in mom. And siut batsim followed by hiut consonant produces t sound. So mote becomes mote, 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 mote. And this kind of means like I, I can't do it or I'm not able to do it. And this is uh it's kind of like a slang in Korean. Um, so this one is hot, right? Hot. The Congress word that means hot, like not something like like not the weather being hot, but like the product or a person being hot. When something is like on trend or if something uh, makes other people feel like the heat of the atmosphere, we say hatada, hatada. But as you can hear from my pronunciation, it's um, the, the consonant assimilation happens, so it's pronounced hatada, hatada, hatada. So moving on to iung uh, this is the only example where consonant assimilation happens with iung batim. So iung batim followed by liul consonant. This is the name of the subway station in Seoul, in line number one, and it's read separately. It's read chong liang li, right? Chong liang li. So if we romanize it, it's chong and liang, right? And li. So as you can see, there are 
double combination here. There is a double yung batsim and liu combination here. So this is the perfect example word to help you follow. Anyways, it's tang liang li. But Koreans find it difficult to produce the sound right after making ng sound. I think it's um, same in English as well. So for example, let's look at I guess this um this phrase and also this eh, and also this one. So th the first one is being racist, right? And the second one is being naughty. So ng sound followed by r is kind of more difficult to pronounce for some reason than ng sound followed by n sound. So being racist, being naughty, being naughty. For me at least, this sounds much more like smoother and more, I guess, I guess easier for my tongue. So for that reason, instead of pronouncing it tong liang ni, we pronounce it like this. Tong liang ni. Tong liang Ni. So when ing bakchim is followed by liel consonant, liel sound gets replaced with nian sound. So instead of tong liang li making clear liel sound, we instead make tong liang ni the sound. Because for us, this is way easier pr to pronounce than this. And let's look at ziut bakchim and together so this one you can think of it as the same role with and Nian consonant simulation assimilation so if you remember correctly this one is read tonne right not totne tonne and this one is the same it's pronounced tonne so these two are pronounced the same although they have different meaning and are written differently and same with this one so this one is pit na nen so bit uh, sorry pit means light and pit na nen means um shining but anyways they are red pin na nen pin na nen pin na nen in Blackpink Jenny's solo song, I'm sure you probably have heard of this um, lyric. She says, "Pitchi nanen solo." That "pitchi" comes from here. So as you can see, the consonant assimilation happened here. So it's not read "pitchi," but it's read "pitchi." So pitinanen and pinanen means the same. You can um, put this e um, between these two, or you don't have to. So pitinanen and pinanen both means shiny. And here is hiyebatim, um, and we're done. So here we have left hiyebatim, but we already dealt with it in the previous video, so the part one video. So we'll skip the explanation. But we can still practice with some examples to test if you guys still remember. So this one is hiyebatsim followed by kyok consonant. If you remember, they produce kyok sound. So this becomes chokke, chokke. And these two produces t sound, thereby making not ta sound. And this one produces n n sound thereby making nun ni sound and when he batsim is combined with ian consonant they just produce no sound and follows whatever sound the vowel has it just becomes pa so he batsim doesn't make the sound of its own it's um decided by which consonant comes next to it like um the previous examples that we we just saw and next one so hiat batsim followed by siat consonant produces double siat sound so rather than to sunida it produces si sound double double consonant double siat sound that 
uh, you can pronounce by putting more pressure into s sound. So, 좋습니다. 좋습니다. This one is pronounced 좋습니다. And this one has hiepatim and tiet consonant assimilate, uh, combination and produces tiet sound. So it becomes hayachi. Hayachi. Before we finish the lesson, I want to practice with um, some sentences and phrases that I brought to kind of practice reading correctly. So this means friendship forever. So this one means friendship and this one means um, something's forever. It's an adjective. But anyways, the point here is to read correctly. So young, right? Young, one, han. But here you can see consonant assimilation happens. So young, one, an. It's more red, young, one, an. And this is Wujong. And if you read them kind of fast, you'll notice that these two gets connected and it becomes Yongwonan Wujong. Yongwonan Wujong. Yongwonan Wujong. Yongwonan Wujong. Right? And how about this one? So, pop means rice or even meal too. And here it means meal. And pop, mok, or Right? But try reading it fast. Pamogo, pamogo, pamogo. As you can see, these two combined produces m, uh, niem batim sound. So p sound gets replaced by niem sound and thereby becomes pamogo, pamogo. It means um, eat, eat meal, like, hey, come and have some meal. How about this one? So this is no, you, close, and mara means um, many or a lot. So this means do you have many clothes? And if you read it separately, it's no, ut, man, a, no, ut, mana. Uh, so regarding this final consonant that might not be familiar to you, uh, it's called I don't know the official name of this uh, final consonant, but let's call it two consonant final consonant. And this is something that we'll learn in part three video, the final consonant that has two consonants in it. And we'll learn what kind of sound it makes and what kind of consonant assimilation happens in the word that has um, two consonant final consonant. So I'll explain further about this in the next lesson. Let's get back on reading it. Um, so, do. Umana, do, umana, do, umana, do, umana. You can barely hear ut sound, right? But you can instead hear un sound. Do, umana, do, umana, because of the mim consonant that comes after siut batsim. So consonant assimilation happens, thereby making it sound like no un mana, no un mana, rather than do ut mana. And same with this sentence. Um, so this is ku te book. Ku te nado pule. Um, but try reading it fast, and you'll barely hear the word te. Ku te nado pule. Ku te nado pule. Ku te nado pule. Instead of tek, you hear ting. Kuting na do bulle, kuting na do bulle. Because consonant assimilation happened here, making yuk batim sound like yung batim and yung sound remains. So kuting na do bulle, kuting na do bulle. There is no problem when you pronounce it kutek na do bulle. Even if you enunciate every word, there is no problem with that. But uh, when you read it fast, it just naturally happens that you say "kuting na do pule." And let's take a look at this one. So, "talmut alasso," "talmut alasso," "talmut alasso," "talmut alasso," "talmut alasso." Here, you can barely hear "mut" sound, right? But instead, you hear "tal." Mo ta la so. 
So here, I don't need to explain the consonant, consonant simulation that happens because this one's easy. Arasso, arasso. Uh, but here, siet batim and ing consonant makes um the sound. So so do, oh, so this is what we learned at the very beginning. So do you remember that? Um, this one, this combination makes s sound, but some combinations can make d sound. Uh, you need to know the grammar to understand it fully, but um, the sentence that I brought here is the the same example with this one. So, siut batim and in consonant produces d sound and this one as well, d sound rather than s sound. So this is not taimo sarasso, but taimo darasso. It means like, um, I knew it wrong. So you say this when you say you misunderstood something or you don't have like the correct knowledge about something. So, and the last sentence would be this one. Okay, so, 엄마는, so 엄마 means mom. Oh, what's wrong with my note? Okay, there you go. 엄마는, 은행에 갔나? So, 은행 means a bank, but this combination makes it sound like 은행, right? So, 엄마는 은행에, 은행에 갔나? You can basically think of double, con double siot, um final consonant as the same as 시읒 받침. So, consider it same with kanna. So this is not katna, but as I just pronounced it, it becomes kanna. So this whole sentence is read 엄마는 은행에, 엄마는 은행에 갔나? 엄마는 은행에 갔나? Rather than enunciating and saying 엄마는 은행에 갔나, which is very uncomfortable. Okay, so that was it for this lesson. I'm sorry it took some time to finish and upload this lesson. I think this lesson went a bit fast, and it's because I assume that you already know how to read um, basic Hangul, so I don't need to like explain in detail. But if you have trouble understanding some parts, then please leave it in the comment section down below. I'll try to um, explain further if I can. And as I told you, in part 3, we'll learn more about two consonant, final consonant, like these or these or these or like so many, not so many, but there are like plenty of other examples and we'll learn how to read and pronounce two consonant final consonant i don't know the official name of this kind of final consonant but you get my point right anyways thanks for studying with me and hope you find my lesson helpful and i'll see you in the next lesson or next video bye bye